Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is looking at the newly updated Sunbraces Exotic that has been highly spoke about within the newly updated mod system. Like a lot of things, Sunbraces have always been good at the craft, with or without the given mod applied to it to further enhance its strength. Now that we've received some new mods, fragments and weapons, the following Exotic will take Scorch and Ignition's Burn to a whole new level. So today's showing is going to allow you to provide non-stop ignitions via subclass and solar weapon, a 17% solar weapon buff, fast super regen through simple means, and most importantly, one of the most easiest builds to craft that you can bring into most in-game content as of now. To start, you're going to want to have Touch of Flame so that our solar grenades have increased duration and will do additional damage. Then you'll want Heat Rises where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. Solar grenades are one of the best grenades to use when locking areas down, inflicting high damage over time and being consistent in damage. With touch of flames though, you can make them not only last longer but also deal out higher damage that outperform what our grenades can do. Along with incinerated snap and a good mod setup, once we activate our Zotic, we should be able to create a steady routine of getting back both our melee and grenades after everything is said and done. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Ashes where you apply more scorched stacks to targets, Ember of Torches where powered melee attacks against targets makes you and allies radiant, Ember of Resolve where solar final blows cure you, and Ember of Searing where defeating scorched targets grant melee energy and create fire sprite. Just like the last solar build we did that focused around fireballs instead, the following is going to allow us to scorch and ignite targets with much more better accuracy than before, while also providing us health doing so, which will go a long way in tough content. Ember of Resolve will allow any solar grenade to heal after each kill, which works perfectly for the setup we have, since this alone will allow us to survive for longer and pretty much allow us to not worry about needing to slotting healing mods or perks within the build. At the same time, fire spikes will also be created from our scorched kills, and these here will feed back into our grenades just in case we run out completely. In many ways, the build is self-sufficient enough that if you want to invest more into other key abilities and not use your grenades so much, then the opportunity is there to do so. For the mods and stats section, a nice balance between your discipline and strength stat is all you'll need to make the build as flexible as possible. How you go about this section will vary from user to user, as the subclass aspects and fragments provided will be doing the heavy lifting for the most of it. This means you can invest in both discipline and strength at 50-50 and you'll still stay strong throughout. At tier 8, our discipline stat will make sure that we can safely get our grenade back through passive means even if we die mid-action or if we use up all our abilities without the required support from energy replenishment mods. Because of the high cooldown rate that solar grenades have, it does mean that we do need to invest into the stat just a bit more so that our charged melee can get it back much faster. So having just the bomber mod and nothing else is truthfully all that you should go for. As said, the stat is already quite high and since our melee with some braces are what's going to kickstart our grenade regen for a few seconds, you won't need to invest into grenade based mods any further than shown. While you're there, you can leave your strength stat at around tier 4 or 5 because of the heat rises and the given fragments shown. However, this will mean that adding on melee kickstart, momentum transfer and invigoration will be required just to support this area even more for its low regen. At most, momentum transfer will help you out hugely here as this will get you around half your melee back depending on where and when you use it. Then your kickstart mod will give you that extra boost along with the scorch damage benefits via the ember searing. Afterwards, you're then left with the armor charge mods to sustain the build for long. The charged up times 2 is going to give you that extra plus 1 of armor charges once active, so you can stack them more compared to just the one charged up mod. After that, adding on the solar cyber mod and the firepower mod will both help with creating all the power as we go along, while ashes to assets mod will get you your super back in literal seconds. If you have the room to do so, and you also plan to use a solar trace rifle, then do be sure to add on the special ammo finder mod just to make it easier in the long run. Now lastly, weapons being used will ideally need to have incandescent on it, so that we can create scorch from kills, and also use it to trigger ignitions via grenades and melee. I have been playing around with the Prometheus lens as of lately, 
as the weapon can apply Scorch on the target and also trigger Incandescent, which is huge for solar based builds. This alone will allow players an easier way to get the mini back fast if you don't want to use a weapon with Pugless on it, since as long as we trigger Ember with Searing correctly, we should be getting our mini back relatively fast. At the same time, it using this on the boss will trigger non-stop ignitions if we proc some braces at the right time. It's quite a powerhouse on the right hand, and I don't see a lot of people talking about how strong the weapon is compared to other solar weapons. Only issue you'll have with the weapon is how fast you eat through ammo if you don't conserve it right. At the same time, most players may not have the weapon unlocked just yet, so as an alternative, the retrace path is a good weapon to use instead if you want something similar but also farmable. Although I would leave heavy out for the user to decide, if you really have a good solar secondary to rely on, then having a heavy weapon with explosive light might be the best play for most players to lean on. The Hothead, Typhon 5, GL5, or even the Regen Grenade Launcher are some of the most wonderful weapons to use that can have explosive light on it and can be an absolute monster when paired with a build that can create all the power one after another. So overall, Solar Grenade Sunbraiser builds is one of the most commonest and strongest solar builds to main right after Starfire Fusion Grenade build users and it's no joke. With how easy it is to proc Sunbraces time after time, they have slightly benefited from the new mods update as they have more freedom in terms of what mods an item player want to use more often. Although Elemental Worlds are no more, all the powers have replaced them and made them more easier to use and proc within the safety of the user's area. This in many ways allows users to use the following in most ending content to which before it never really had the ability to do so, for example master or even GM content. Now what I mean by this is that before the update, if you ever wanted to use some braces in much harder content, you would need to have a steady source of grenade regen over time just in case you fall flat in both areas. This is where elemental worlds would come in as they would help with getting your midi and grenade energy back faster compared to just relying on a single weapon perk. Now however, we have armor charges that allows us to get our energy back much faster than what Elemental World offers. Although it's still to be tested, it should allow players the option to use them more often in such activities that have well hardened enemies available. At the same time, the following is still good in things like Battleground where you face waves upon waves of enemies of all times. This is where the build would shine the most in as you can proc its effects easily here and reap the rewards after. On top of that, the new raid has shown the build to excel well in a few encounters, such as the first, second and third areas. Although, do be careful with overdoing the grenades and blocking certain progress as many people can't see where they need to go with so many solo grenades around. Only downside to using the following build is what it's competing with at the moment. The Starfire Procol and even the Firebolt Grenade Seasonal Meta is in many ways slightly better than what some races offer considering how easy and strong they are in all content. Although Firebolts are limited to just this season, Starfire still reigns supreme in terms of damage and overall DPS even though they will be nerfed at some point. Even with the competition, I still think some races are worth the investment in the long run as their build crafting capabilities is there and easy to do. You don't need a lot to understand it, and even with the many changes Destiny has had over time, it's still stuck to his job and done it really well. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have playlists available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you all again soon.